Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the July 24th, 2019 Pittsburgh Board of Education and Pittsburgh Mount Oliver Intermediate Legislative, Intermediate Unit Legislative Meeting. Before we begin this evening, I'd like to ask everyone to please turn off cell phones or put them on vibrate. Would everyone please rise so we can salute the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Thank you. We will begin this evening with the Pittsburgh Mount Oliver Intermediate Unit. Mrs. Kramer, can we please have a roll call? Mr. Carter. Here. Ms. Edwards. Here. Ms. Falls. Present. Dr. Hawley. Here. Mrs. Kaleida. Mrs. Kennedy. Present. Mr. Udine. Present. And Ms. Wilson. We'll skip her and come back. Uh, Mrs. Wren? Here. Okay. Ms. Wilson appears to have left the room for a moment. So we have um, eight present, one absent. Thank you, Mrs. Kramer. Will board members please turn to the minutes from last month? Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions? If there, I'd like a motion, a second, to approve the minutes for June 19th, 2019, legislative meeting for the Pittsburgh, June 24th, 2009. Oh, the minutes, I'm sorry. June 19th, I'm sorry. Forget, long day. Uh, for the June 19th, 2019, legislative meeting for the Pittsburgh Mount Oliver Intermediate Unit. So Sec motion, Ms. Falls. Stood. Second, Mr. Dean. Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Negative, same sign. Minutes stand approved. The committee report on education that includes agenda items 20.01 to 21.02 is before you. Are there any questions or comments that were not answered at agenda review? If there are no questions or comments, do we have a motion and a second for a roll call vote? Second. Ms. Kennedy, motion, second by Ms. Edwards. Thank you. Ms. Kramer, may we have a roll call vote? Mr. Carter. Yes. Ms. Edwards. Yes. Ms. Falls. Yes. Dr. Holly. Yes. Mrs. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Udine? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. And Mrs. Wren? Yes. Motion passes 8-0. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Mrs. Kramer. The committee report on business finance that includes agenda items 25.01 is before you. Are there any questions or comments that were not answered in agenda review? There are no uh, Ms., uh, Dr. Holly? Yes, I'd like to ask Mr., uh, Dr. Dwyer uh, for the testing materials. No, no. we're oh, in no. intermediate unit. I'm sorry. Okay. We're in, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, where, if there are no other questions or comments, do we have a motion and second for a roll call vote? So moved. Motion, Second. Ms. Edwards. Second, Second. Uh, Ms. Kennedy. Mr. Carter. Yes. Ms. Edwards. Yes. Ms. Falls. Yes. Dr. Holly. Yes. Mrs. Kennedy. Yes. Mr. Udine. Yes. Ms. Wilson. Yes. And Mrs. Wren. Yes. Yes. Most motion passes 8-0. Thank you, Mrs. Kramer. Item 28.1 is the Pittsburgh Mount Oliver Financial Travel and Travel Report for June 2019. Are there any questions or comments about the report? If there are no questions or comments, I'd like a motion and a second to adjourn. So moved. Ms. Motion by Ms. Kennedy. Second. Second by Dr. Holly. 
All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say tie. This meeting is adjourned. I would like to call to order the July, I guess just for theatrics. I would like to call to order um, the July 24th meeting for the Pittsburgh Public Schools to order. Ms. Kramer, may we please have a roll call vote? Mr. Carter. Here. Ms. Edwards. Here. Ms. Falls. Present. Dr. Holly. Here. Mrs. Kaleida. Mrs. Kennedy. Present. Mr. Udine. Here. Ms. Wilson. Here. And Mrs. Wren. Here. Eight members present, one absent. Thank you, Mrs. Kramer. At this time, I'd like to ask Ms. Cindy Falls to share our core beliefs and commitments. Our core beliefs and commitments. We will educate all children to their highest level of academic achievement. We will provide a safe and orderly environment for all students and employees. We will provide efficient and effective support for all students, families, teachers, and administrators. We will distribute resources in an efficient and equitable manner to address the needs of all students to the maximum extent feasible. We will improve public confidence and encourage strong parent community engagement in the district. Thank you, Ms. Falls. Will board members please turn to the minutes? Tonight we will be approving the minutes for June 19th, 2019 legisl le legislative session. Are there any corrections, additions, or um, deletions? Okay, if there are no deletions and no comments, I'd like to have a motion, a second, to approve the meetings of June 19th, 2019 legislative session. Second. Motion, Dr. Hawley, second by Ms. Kennedy. Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The, the meetings stand approved. At this time, I'd like to read the executive session statement. In addition to executive sessions announced at the legislative meeting of June 19, 2019, the board met in executive sessions on July 17 and immediately before this legislative meeting to discuss various personnel matters that may include, but are not limited to, administration, administrative vacancies and positions open and closed. The board does not vote at executive sessions and litigation. Thank you. The committee report on education and student performance is before you, submitted by Ms. Sylvia Wilson, chairperson in her committee. The report includes agenda items 5.01 through 8.22. Um, Ms. Jenkins, do you have an update on any of the items? Yes, please pull item 8.18, Vision to Learn. Okay, item 8.18 will be pulled. If um, there are no further items pulled for discussion and agenda review. Are there any questions or comments on the committee report on education at this time that were not answered in agenda review? Ms. Kennedy? Uh, thank you, Mrs. Wren. So, um, in advance of last week's meeting, I'd sent questions and received answers, and I found out from talking to Ms. Willig that the reason some stuff could not be updated in board docs was because it wasn't set on the floor. And some of them, and so Ms. Jenkins, I need you to confirm for the floor um, that on 6.19, uh, there was a change made for the not to exceed amount. And it's supposed to, I was told in the response to my question, it was 160,000. Would that be a correct change? Yes. Thank you. Um, and now 6.25. I was told the not to exceed amount is 400,000. Would that be a correct change? Yes. Okay, and I was told, eight, and I have to remember what the 810, oh, 810 was supposed to have a wording change because in the, in the wording, it says it would be distributed throughout the high schools. 
yet in the administrative content, it says Westinghouse, and the response I received was it was only going to go to Westinghouse. Is that a correct change? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, uh, Ms. Kramer, is that sufficient to get this changed for the minutes and stuff? So for the changes to be accurate, and we will correct them in the in board docs, but I would like th that as a motion to amend okay. um, those particular items. Okay. Can I make one big motion for... Mo yeah, you can make a motion to amend the correction to 6.19, I believe, and then say them, and I'll, I'll, I'll record them. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Kramer, for the guidance. I'd like a motion to amend three items. First item is 6.19 and change the not to exceed amount to 160,000. The second item is 6.25, and that is to change the not to exceed amount to 400,000. And the last one is number 8.10, and instead of saying it will be distributed throughout the high schools, state it will be distributed to Westinghouse. Do we have a second for Ms. Kennedy's amendment? Sorry. Motion to her. Thank you, Dr. Holly. Ms. Kramer, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same side. Thank you. So the agenda stands amended as read into the record by Mrs. Kennedy and approved by the board. That was approved 8-0. And so when the vote comes on the entire report, it'll be as amended by that prior motion. Thank you so much for, for the guidance. Okay, so I, I have some more stuff. Um, on, let's see, 10.15 Reading Horizons, and I'd asked, we all asked questions on this at various meetings, and one of the questions I asked were, well, were two questions, was who was on the MTSS committee, and the other question is, what are the school Ms. districts Ken in Pennsylvania? Ms. Kennedy, is that, is that a business item or an education oh. item? Oh, that's a business item. I thought, yeah. I thought Reading Horizons, oh, you're right, I'm sorry. So, never that's mind, okay. I, I got ahead of myself. I'm sorry, I got to, you know, I, I keep thinking education. All mm -hmm. right, thank you very much for that correction. All right, um, I will say, just as a reminder, when it comes to the vote tonight, I need to abstain on 7.01 and 8.17 because both of those involve my employer. And so, thank you very much. I'm sorry. No problem. Dr. Holly, um, you had a question earlier. No, mine was in the business. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Ms. Falls? Thank you, Mrs. Wren. Just for clarification, um, I'm asking if 6.08, the Shadow Student Athletics um, Development, um, has that been, a, the funds been approved by PDE? Not at this time. It's part of the SIG grant, and that doesn't come in right away. Okay. And um, 8.17, um, with the, regarding the partners, I had asked the question about the out-of-state um, partner. I was wondering if we found an answer for that. We still need to get that information to you, Ms. Um, Falls. Thank you, Ms. Ren. Are there any other questions or comments on the educational portion of the legislative meeting? Oh, Mr. Carter, hold on. Go ahead, Mr. Carter. Um, I, I guess I'd like to make a motion to table item uh, Repeat. Please repeat. Please repeat, Mr. Carter. I'd like to make a motion to table item 8.19. 8.19. Right. Does he have to, does he have to give a reason? Um, 
Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, the explanation as to why I want to table it is because initially when I saw this item, I thought it was a renewal of the past agreement that we had with DHS, not a uh, revision to the uh, agreement. Um, I also received the memo that Amy Zundel had sent out on Monday regarding this particular item, and I have more questions. And so I'd like to table this item until um, all my questions are answered related to this MOU and what the changes actually mean uh, related to student privacy. I'll second that. Um, Dr. Hamlet and then Mr. Dean. I just want to clarify to the board, uh, one of the things that we talk about oftentimes is making sure that we have um, information about our students so we can support their social, emotional, mental health um, support services. Um, right now, the initial MOU only provided one-way information. DHS was getting everything. We weren't getting anything. We have to call and go through tasks to get information we need. This revision will give us that ability to do it in real time. Uh, further supporting our students' growth and the support they need when it comes to mental health services and other things they may need. So this, I just want to clarify that. We'll be getting receiving information that we need to support our children. So I just. So I'd like to request that copy be sent to board members so that we can actually see the specific revisions being made in this particular item. Um, Mr. Udine and then Ms. Kennedy. Thank you. Uh, my question is, if this item is tabled, um, when is it eligible to come back um, before the board? Is that a parliamentary question? If we table, now this is to the solicitor. If we table this tonight, when can it come back to the board? So if it's tabled to a time certain, it could be automatically placed upon the agenda for the next legislative meeting, um, rather, whether it be a special legislative at the beginning of August or the next legislative meeting in August. Um, I would defer to the administration as to whether or not that would disrupt anything um, that, that is currently in place. I think um, to your point, if we have a special legislative, which you are planning to do early August, that it will actually be okay and we'll still be able to use those services and have that in place when school starts. Uh, as we um, proceed during the meeting, there are some concerns that I have about our um, mental health and social services. And uh, as long as they would not be interrupted, uh, I would support the motion to table. Thank you, Mr. Dean. Mr. Ken Ms. Kennedy and uh, then thank, Dr. Holly. Thank you. Um, those of us who attended the pre-policy meeting that was called just to review this, where there were representatives from ACLU, um, Education Law Center, 1PA, and Education Rights Network, which is part of the 1PA, including the speaker from Monday night, which is why she had a red line copy. Now, a lot of those comments that the ACLU suggested, we, they were good comments, and they did their research, provided a lot of, they even provided reference to other districts, you know, that where they were getting from wasn't something they pulled from thin air. And we agreed, and, and Amy was going to, Amy Zundell was going to incorporate that. All right, so I thought at the end of that meeting, I thought things were in good place for this. And... I personally thought with the incorporation of the suggestions from the ACLU and other stuff that was dis uh, discussed at that meeting that we were good to go. So at this point, I do not support postponing this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kenny. Dr. Holly. Um, maybe I'm misunderstanding. This is 8.19. I don't think this was the um, particular item that... Oh. <laughs> I think that was another oh, item. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> That's the police MOU. <laughs> you, okay. MOU with the city. Oh, oh the city. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Never mind. Okay. You understand? Okay. Thank you for the correction. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that, this that Dr. Hall. This is a different MOU. <laughs> the, 
the one that, Kevin, that Mr. Carter is talking about is coming from student services, D, from D, for DHS. But it is, it's, it's, this is the, yeah, but the one Mrs. is referring to is something different. Um, and my question to um, the board. Or change it with DHS will also last into perpetuity until one party decides to cancel it in the future. So I, I don't think that it will have to, I think that will, we won't have to vote on it every year. So I want to ask questions and get more clarity before we vote on this more permanent agreement with this. I'm going to have to, uh, uh, is it my turn? Okay. It and was my, um, then Dr. Hamlet. Uh, I'm going to agree with uh, Mr. Carter that I think we need to have more conversations about this, primarily because we're asking for now the information that the Department of Human Services has on children that are in that, um, that participate in the programming that they have. Um, we certainly want to know about that so that we can support youngsters. But I think we're, there was a missing piece there, and maybe um, Mrs. Freeze can um, help me to understand. Why wouldn't we get um, information from the parent in order to get that privacy information? Is there something that the HIPAA law uh, would uh, prevent us? I'm sorry. FERPA, yeah, we are not getting, somebody should be giving um, the school district permission to get that sensitive type material um, and programming that they may be doing with youngsters. Uh, so it's not just a, uh, a one-way uh, stream of information, but the parent needs to know that we're actually accessing that information from another agency. I'm not sure. So can somebody help us? I can Ooh. help you. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Oh, sorry, I'll save Ms. Melissa. Sorry, Ms. I'll Freeze. save uh, Ms. Freeze the trip. So um, there's there are multiple layers to the MOU that have been in place for a number of years. And one of those is that the Department of Human Services has very strict confidentiality provisions that apply to a lot of the data that they have way beyond what FERPA does to protect our educational records. So they actually are getting the parental consent to share information back to the school district in most cases. Um, in other cases, DHS is actually acting as the parent. So they, are, they have the authority to give the consent because maybe that child has been adjudicated dependent and DHS is the legal parent um, for purposes of, of giving consent for the sharing of information. Um, and then there are other cases um, that, that, that are detailed out in the MOU, but it's not, they're not just giving over information they have, especially there's, there's drug and alcohol restrictions, there's mental health restrictions. Um, there are, um, they, they do have to comply with HIPAA in certain areas of their service provision, whereas we, we only really have to deal with FERPA. And so we are ensuring that we're complying with our obligations under FERPA on our side of the MOU, and they are ensuring that they're complying with the confidentiality provisions that apply to the myriad of services um, offered under their umbrella. And so they would not be violating any of those confidentiality rights in any information that they would not be permitted to share without parental consent, they are getting that consent at the time of service inception with the parent. They're gonna say, um, here's, we'd like to share information back to the school district, do you permit us to do so? And if the parent says no, then they would not be able to share that information back to us. I think that was one of the pieces that um, the board did not have in uh, deliberating that, uh, this particular item I know you were on vacation, Ms. Uh, Freeze. So when we were talking about this, that was one of the, even amongst ourselves, that was one of the uh, problems that we had. Uh, we wanted to make sure that parents were, knew that uh, we were asking for this, the school district was asking for that particular information before we went out and started to um, do any work with the child around those particular, 
um, problems or community problems, not community problems, but any of the problems that we had. I think though that um, this is something that's very sensitive that we probably need to bring back to the board um, and have a, 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 a conversation about so that all of us are on the same, um, uh, we're on the same page about how this will work um, and uh, so that we can support our youngsters um, as much as possible. Not that it shouldn't be done, but, and, but just hearing from our solicitor now on um, what this all entails, I don't think that we all quite understood what was happening uh, with this particular item, Dr. Hamlet. So that's why we're as, I'm, I, I will agree with uh, Mr. Carter that we need to have another conversation around this. I'm sorry. Ms. Wilson. You forgot me. Um, oh. <laughs> then Mr. Okay. Then Dr. Hamlet. I was just gonna say my only question is, why would it be forever? Wouldn't we want to have some time that we come back and talk about it? Because things can happen in two years, three years, four years. I think that's the only thing that I really have, I question is that. We'd like to pull item 8.19 for further discussion. <laughs> and to Dr. Holly's point, we can um, call DHS and see if they will come out and do a co-presentation with us and talk deeply about the MOU in the public, the board, okay? Thank you, Dr. Hamlet. So there will be no motion going forward on that item. <laughs> Could you withdraw your item, your motion, Mr. Carter? Um, motion withdrawn. Thank you, Mr. Carter. If there are no further questions or comments for concern, do we have, <laughs> or concerns, do we have a motion or a second for a roll call vote on the committee report on education and student performance? Second. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Ms. Kramer, may we have a roll call vote on the committee report on education and student performance? Okay, this motion is for the report excluding 8.18 and 8.19. Those have been pulled and with the amendments that were previous, previously approved to 6.19, 6.25, and 8.10. All right, uh, Mr. Carter. Yes. Ms. Edwards. Yes. Ms. Falls. Yes, with um, comment that 608, um, the, the information gets back to the board as soon as possible. And um, again, on 8.17, my question was not answered, but I don't believe it should hold up that particular um, uh, item. But um, so reluctantly, um, I will say, Yes. Okay. And Dr. Holly? Yes. Mrs. Kennedy? Yes, on the report as a whole, I'm abstaining on items 7.01 and 8.17, and I'll pass this down to Ms. Kramer. And eight, um, so yeah, so that would be it. Thank you. Okay, I've got it. And Mr. Udine? A point of information. Which item is the personnel action under? That is after the report on business and finance, which we have not gotten to yet. Thank you. Yes. Vote yes. All right. And Ms. Wilson. Yes. Mrs. Wren. Yes. Okay, the report as a whole passes 8-0. Um, with two abstentions on items 7.01 and 8.17, those items would be 701. Report passes, thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Kramer. We will now move on to the committee on report on business finance and minority business enterprises that is before you submitted by Mr. Saludin, chairperson and his committee. The report includes agenda items 10.01 through 12.05. Mr. Joseph, do you have any updates on any of the items? Yes, item 12.03 is being pulled from the agenda. Thank you. Was that 12.03? Yes, 12.03. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. 
There were no. Mr. Carter. Is item 12.03 being pulled to be put back on at a future date, or is it being pulled permanently? Uh, it's being pulled because it's, deter it's been determined that it does not meet the but for condition of our loader policy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. There were no items pulled for further discussion and agenda review. Are there any questions or comments on the committee report on business, finance, and minority business enterprises at this time that were not answered in agenda review? Dr. Holly. Yes, 10.20. Um, um, Mr. Dwyer, um, I try to um, understand uh, this particular board tab, um, and I think I have it now. However, there are a couple of questions that I'd like to ask. The, um, for the information that will be um, gardened from this uh, particular uh, MAP program, uh, who holds the information? Well, historically, the historical data that will be given um, from the, st that they will get, that the, um, this particular program will get from the students, who will hold that historical data? So the information that's going to be um, collected through the assessments will live in both the assessment platform during the tenure of our contracts with them, and we will also be receiving that data from them and um, maintaining that in our data systems so that we can make sure that we have that. So okay. is that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, at, if we end the contract or if we don't renew the contract, we have them delete the data. That's How do we know that they've deleted that data? Because this is the problem that I'm having. Um, if they hold, if they hold the data as we hold the data, um, that historical data, if I want to know where it goes on their platform, are you just telling me they're going to delete it and we accept that, that they're going to delete it? Or we'll have it on our platform as historical data? We will have it on our platform as historical data regardless of if we continue with them after a year contract or a two-year contract. We will have the data because we're going to be getting it and we'll have that in our student records. Um, if we end the contract with them, the same as we do with any other vendor, when we require them to delete the data. We is that, is that a part of the contract, that they delete that data? We can make sure that it is part of the contract, and generally for any type of uh, vendor that we share student data with, we would want to have a certification of destruction of data um, upon completion of the contract or with a reasonable, it's usually a 30 to 90 day window after the termination. So, and Mr., uh, I'm sorry, and Dr. Dwyer will be in charge of that, making sure that that happens? How will we make sure that that happens? We'll make sure that it's flagged through the law department when those contracts come in, um, and I'll make a note of it. And work with Dr. Dwyer to make sure that that happens. Okay, the next question I have is, um, this, uh, is this a research-based program um, organization? Because I want to know if they're going to be using this um, data for any research, research purposes. So NWEA is a research organization. However, they cannot use our data without our approval and without our review. So. They are a research organization. They don't use educational data from, or at least from us, without approval. The same as any other researcher would have to go through an approval. So they'll have to go through our IRB and it would be reviewed for what it is that they're doing and the analyses that they're doing as well. And who would uh, make that decision? Because now I have a problem um, uh, that it's a research organization that's um, getting our students information and are they going to be using that for what purpose you know that uh, help me understand it so help me NWEA was a research organization from its inception they built the assessment 
um, because they felt like the uh, existing assessments weren't providing adequate information to schools and to districts and to teachers. Um, so NWA is a research organization. Um, they're not allowed to use data from, they're not allowed to use educational data without the approval of the district. And there's a process for doing that and our process is the IRB process. They have to submit to our IRB if they're going to try and use any data from any of our students. It's not, there is no blanket approval for them to do any kind of research with any of our data without approval from us and it would go through that process. Okay, is that a part of the contract as well? We can make sure that it's in there, but I believe that it is in the contract. Um, will the solicitor make sure that that is a part of the contract as well? Yes. <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> huh? All right. <laughs> I may have to look at that. Um, my next question, um, I'll let somebody else answer for right now. Ms. Falls and then Ms. Kennedy. 12.04, um, uh, um, that was a placeholder for quite a long time, um, and I think it just got changed probably today. Um, legal has gone over this. Um, has it gone through the, if I'm, I could be wrong, because this is way out of my realm, but the, um, the county and the city, aren't we last on this sequence? And has it gone through that process? So this is different from a, oh. uh, this is different from a TIF that has that sequence of events. So uh, we have an application process, the county has a application process, but for the city it's by right. Uh, so we also, as part of our po policy, we do have, uh, we only participate if both parties are participating as well. So if one of them isn't participating, we won't participate. And Mr. Joseph, um, I'm sure you've gone over this with a fine tooth comb. This is um, something that will benefit the district? So in the long term, it will lead to higher uh, tax tax revenues on a site that isn't currently occupied. So it's uh, tax abatement that helps with the development of uh, this uh, uh, business property and uh, commercial property for businesses. And uh, in the long term, after the abatement, we will see the full uh, the full impact of the increased revenue. But we'll see a graduated uh, increase in revenue along the ten year period. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Um, 12.05, that is in that section. I want to, before I go on, <laughs> um, it I is. just want to check. Last, yeah. It's the last item of okay. the business report. Okay. Um, has has uh, legal gone over this report from the Attorney General? I have not personally gone over the report, but it is something, I mean, the once the auditor issues their report, if there are findings, we have to comply with those findings and um, take corrective actions, and we can work with the administration to make sure that those are followed through with, but I believe that that is all reported out in this item. Um, and if there's anything, I think uh, Ms. Capretta has additional information. Um, Pam Capretta, Chief Operations Officer. Um, Mr. Ira Weiss um, helped us draft some of our responses um, to the state. Thank you. Um, and in reading this, I, I kind of, this is just my summation of it. I saw, I feel like there were some areas where um, it was kind of like a little pushback that was going, you know, the state said something and then we answered and then later on it was said again and we answered the same thing. Uh, how, do you, how do you proceed, Dr. Hamlet, to see that these um, items are, are completed and how are, how are you responding to this? To the, um, as a whole. Sorry. 
I said as a whole, the whole report. Well, I was with um, Ms. Capretta when we met with the Auditor General's individuals that came down to report out. Um, we got the report. Pam started working on the responses. Number one, I want to know, are we out of compliance with PA code? Because some, th some things are just a based on the Auditor General's landscape of 500, over 500 small school districts, and you only have two or three or four or five large districts, you do business differently. So some of it is about what th their opinion was that we should be doing and not against PA code. And I was very clear when I had conversations with Pam, what are we non-compliant on PA code? We must change that, but also provide a response for the board about if we're not doing this, this is why. And I think you'll find all that in the documents, in the summary documents. Dr. Hamlet, yes, indeed. That's why I'm as asking you how it got to that point. Because, you know, it, reading it from the state side and then reading the district's response, um, now I understand how you got to that place. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ryan. You're welcome, Ms. Falls. Ms. Kennedy? Uh, thank you. So I'm going to start with 10.15, Reading Horizons. Now, we were told that if we approve this, there will be two days of professional development in August, right before school starts, for the teachers on this. Now, I'm really curious, can we actually receive all the materials in time, given the lead time on getting materials when we order it? So if we approve this tonight and an order is placed tomorrow, what is the guaranteed delivery time? I can get that. I'm sorry, Monika Jenkins, Chief Academic Officer. I can get that to the board, but I've already uh, spoken with um, the representative that's been working with Kendra Wester, and they assured me that they'll do everything they can once the board, the, the board is, if it's approved by the board. Okay. But I won't be able to have a date and time until I speak with them. Well, doing everything they can and then having it in time, not just for the PD, but so our teachers have time to look through and familiarize themselves and prepare their intervention lessons you know, right at the beginning of the school year, that's a rough time to, to throw new stuff on them. And if those of us who have been around have seen when stuff comes in at the last minute, or in some cases, after the last minute. And the, the teachers, to no fault of their own, do not have the time to prepare. So they lose on their ability to teach the material. The students lose because the teacher doesn't have the time to prepare to teach the material with fidelity. So that is a large concern of mine. Because also, having asked the questions earlier this month for uh, who was on the MTSS committee and what other school districts in Pennsylvania, I went and reached out to some of them. And from what, someone in another school district responded uh, about you know what it was, and it says, um, tier three, Intervention teachers had lots of positive feedback to share, very explicit. Benefit, teaches rules, patterns that other programs leave out, or at least in a way that makes so much sense. Helps kids analyze and process structure of words. Looking forward to year two of implementation, because they have only had one year, all right? But the weakness, and this person goes, not sure this is a weakness, but teachers do need training on the program to teach it. Need to have fidelity to its approach. So that's a big red flag to me that if they don't get the materials until the last minute, they won't be able to teach it with fidelity. All right, now, I also did learn from somebody else who saw the MTSS presentation that it's phonics space, adds co added comprehension, and adds on at each grade level. But only problem, the, the whole, but the whole program, bits and pieces, ruin the fidelity. So that leaves me with some concerns. So on one hand, I want to vote to accept, to approve this. On the other hand, I'm really wary about putting something in at the last minute for our teachers. And, and so I've been going back and forth on this one. And earlier today, I was a yes. And at this point, especially since you can't guarantee it'll be here in time, I'm going to have to vote no tonight, and I'm sorry about that. Um, and so um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, I think that's my, my questions on section on, on business finance. Thank you very much. Sorry, Ms. Jenkins. Thank you, Mrs. Wren. Hold on a second. Dr. Hamlet. 
Ms. Jenkins, if we don't get this Reading Horizons program, what will be that tier three intervention? Where will we be left um, with having that intervention for our teachers and our students? So it would be based on the needs of the students, so depending on where they would fall. So your MTSS, when you're looking at the framework, the product itself, we will not have a specific product. It just depends on what's approved tonight. Um, but I have already worked with the team. They are looking at alternatives if, if none of this is approved. But it, but it will be a concern. Mr. Dean. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> as it concerns um, 10 point 09, 10.10, 10.14, 10.15, 10.16, 10.19, and 10.20. All of these are programs to supplement our current reading um, program. And they are interventions um, intended to boost the current curricula. They were submitted to us late. They were submitted to us for approval a couple months before they were to be purchased, received, uh, implemented, trained, and for the current school year. I mean, this is for 2019-2020 school year, which starts in a few weeks. That's too late. And I think we ought not to condone the habit of administration bringing materials to us, uh, programs to us to purchase without having adequate time to introduce those programs, giving us adequate time to do our own study and research of those programs having adequate time for professional development. We can't run programs like that. We have to receive the materials in sufficient time to give it serious consideration that it deserves. And for, those, for that reason, I will be voting no on all of those items I just identified. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dean. Mr. Carter? Hi, uh, yes. I, um, I don't have anything particularly for this um, agenda block, but I will say that I requested information on item 10.14 and did not receive that information. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Are there any more questions or comments? 10.14, I think he said. 10.14, Mr. Carter? Yes. Thank you. Bryn. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Hamlet. Yeah. So I just want to go on record saying is that these are intervention programs, and I think of the ones that were actually um, mentioned, there's only two that will be new. The NWEA map, which will support our further reduction in the amount of assessments that our teachers are giving so they can get back to more teaching, because they that particular program or that um, um, assessment falls in line and is aligned with Ed Mentum and other programs. So therefore, those assessments within those intervention programs will need to be done. And those kids can actually focus on the skill sets, um, deficiencies they need to move forward. So I would say um, to the point, if the, if the board has a concern about the time, time frame or something like that we put in that we, we have, give me a specific time frame that the board wants to work in. But I also would say that um, this is what we this is what we do every day. This is our job. So it's 
incumbent upon us to make sure we give you the information that you need to make sound decisions so you don't have to necessarily go do research. So any, if any of that is needed in a further or deeper um, um, case, let us know so we can make sure we provide that information for the board so we can move forward and provide these services and continue the progress we've been making in Pittsburgh Public Schools. Mr. Udine. No. Thank you, Dr. Hamlet. Mr. Udine. Thank you. I don't think it's up to us to determine how much time in advance we should get this material. I think based on the material and the complexity of it and the availability of it, the administration should provide adequate time for the board to consider. If this is material that is essential to students' development for school year 2019-2020, we should have received it earlier. There's no reason why that I can see we could not have gotten it earlier and had time to consider it. I'm not talking about the board doing research. I'm talking about the board being aware of what it is authorizing. If we're authorizing the purchase of certain contracts and materials, then we should know what it is that we're doing in a fundamental and profound way and giving us the materials a few weeks before school start is not sufficient time. Thank you, Mr. Dean. If there are no more questions or comments, do we have a motion, a second? Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Hamlet. Okay, one more thing. Reading Horizons is not new. Majority of these are renewals of the programs we already had in place. If you look at our data, our data is moving. So again, this is not new. But also, we are well aware of the professional development days that we have in place and when we can do things with our teachers and our administrators to make sure they understand their programs. And I'm asked the question again, you talked about adequate time. Let us know, let me know what adequate time is for you, the board, to make sure they can make decisions and you have a sound information that you need to make these uh, decisions to move forward. Thank you, Dr. Hamlet, uh, Ms. Kennedy, and then Ms., um, Dr. Holly. Uh, thank you. Well, I agree that Reading Horizons may not be new to the district. It is new to the folks outside of PSE. So you're talking about the majority of the people who are going to be teaching it, and I cannot believe that we have enough materials on hand today for all the now new people that have to be teaching it at various grade levels. So I'm not saying that it wasn't here, I'm just saying my concern is having everything in place in time for them to understand it and teach it with fidelity and get the proper training. And that is a large concern of mine. And given the lead time on buying other curriculum materials in the past, case in point last year with the math curriculum that we approved in August and it still wasn't available at the beginning of June before school left out, I have large concerns about doing it. And Unfortunately, years ago, well, as a parent, I saw while well, teachers were getting curriculum handed to them, a day, if they were lucky, a day, more than a day before they had to teach it. And it was horrible, simply horrible, because they did not have time to learn it themselves in order to teach it. And that is not doing any good service to our students. So I have to think of our students. So if our teachers do not have the time to learn the material with fidelity, to then teach it with fidelity, that is a disservice to our students, and I have to put our students first. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Dr. Holly. I think that this um, uh, information can come to the education, pre-education committee meeting um, prior to uh, it coming to a full education committee meeting, and the people who are on that pre-education committee can actually uh, determine whether or not it would be most appropriate if you have enough time. Um, I will agree that it is uh, it's pretty fast. Um, I, I, I do have some concerns, as Mrs. Kennedy stated, that the um, teachers will not be able to have enough time to actually immerse themselves in this particular um, uh, program. However, I know that you need a program since now we're finding out 
that we don't have one. Um, I'd hate to start the school year off without having the supports for young people, um, but this really should have been given to us probably, uh, if I'm just thinking about it out loud, maybe at the end of March and given us a time in April to, di to digest this material. And then also the, we could have had time to order it, I mean, approve it, order it, and have it in the hands of the teachers when they actually left for the summer, if, not to say they're gonna take this home and read it over on the beach, but some of them do. They actually do take home their teacher's manuals and look through them and identify um, the strengths, weaknesses, and how they're actually utilizing it. It'll also give the CNI reading team more time to actually decide on how they're going to do the professional development so that when we come back in August, it's ready to immerse themselves and get right into the classroom. So I think that it's a part where um, the pre-education committee will take a look at any new material that's going to be given out for the following year um, and just have a deadline date probably of March um, so that we have time to actually uh, immerse ourselves in that work. I mean, it's just a, a thought, and you may have something different, but it, um, I will agree, you do need the time for it. Ms. Jenkins, did you want to respond to that? Yes, so I can uh, say that most of our products are already in. Um, Rebecca Calhoun, I've been working together to make sure all the products are in. I can guarantee, and I work my best to make sure it happens, I, I can guarantee that the products will be here uh, prior to August, uh, and I'll, I'm gonna say August 10th. I'll work with them to make sure it's there. I'm referring to Reading Horizons. All the other products are already in. We're just waiting to sit down and go with the principals to make sure they receive the materials. Thank you, Ms. Wilkins and Ms. Wilson, and then uh, Mr. Dean, please. Yeah, I want to first thank Dr. Holly because I was sitting here starting to steam just a teensy weensy weensy bit. Um, yes, a uh, better timeline would be March, but I felt that I needed to speak on behalf, on, on behalf of teachers. Um, it's always great to have your reading materials at the end of the school year um, so that you can take them home over the summer and read over it. And there are many teachers who would in fact do that. But I, on the other hand, have also been one of the, over all these years in this district, knowing that many times you didn't get your new materials until just before school started. You had in service just before school started and you went in there and you don't get grasp everything until you really start using it. And uh, I don't want to give people the implications that just because someone gets something in the beginning of August that suddenly you became incompetent in t of teaching because that's not the case. Uh, it's just as nice to be able to prepare longer. And so the timeline that you discussed with March and going forward would be a better timeline. But you know what? Right now it's July. We're talking about what we need for the start of this school year. We don't need to delay this another year. Teachers aren't dumb. They can figure it out, especially if they've been teaching reading for a long time. Um, they won't have the, 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 the headway time to delve into it, but they're gonna be able to pick it up and keep moving. I just felt that I needed to, to speak out for teachers because we do the job, we get the job done if we have the right things to use. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Mr. Udine. Yeah, I'm not going to continue this circular argument for too long. Um, but I'm confused. I thought we were being asked to approve tonight certain programs to be purchased. Is that, am I mistaken about we that? We are, yes. Then I'm unclear about the comment that Ms. Jenkins just made that most of these materials are already in hand. How did they get in hand if we're being asked to purchase them? I'm referring to our other products that are already in, so like the math products, the, the additional ready gem materials, the My Perspective products, so all those things that we have to when we have increased enrollment 
or if we have any losses, we have to be able to make sure that we are supplying the schools with those materials. We've already started that process a long time ago. We already have them already, most of them are already delivered. We actually have almost everything that we've already asked for. This Reading Horizons would be the only product right now that we would be asking to add, and that's something that I can work to make sure that we have it when we need to have it. All other products are renewals of licenses. So we've had them last year, so it's just about renewing the licenses and uploading the student data. Thank you. Um, again, if there are no further questions or comments, do we have a motion and a second for roll call vote on the committee report on, it, on business, finance, and minority business enterprises? Second. Motion by Ms. Wilson, second by Ms. Falls. Thank you. Ms. Kramer, may we please have a roll call vote on the report for, on business, finance, and minority business enterprises, please. Mr. Carter. Um, a yes on the report as a whole, a no on items 10.13, 10.14, and 10.15. So just so I'm clear, that is a yes on the report as a whole, a no on 10.13, 10.14, and 10.15. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Okay. Ms. Edwards. Yes. Ms. Falls. Yes. Dr. Holly. Yes. Mrs. Kennedy. Yes, on the report as a whole, no on 10.20. And I will give you your yes since you guaranteed an August 10th for 10.15. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Udine. I identified unreadiness on several items in this mm -hmm. section. Uh, do you have them or do I need I, to repeat it? So I have listed for you uh, if I'm correct, no on 10 10.09, 10 10.10, 10.10, 10.13, 10.14, 10.15, 10.16, 10.19, and 10.20. Is that correct? Um, did you get 10.16? Yes. One nine? Yes. 20? Yes. Thank you. All right, so that'll be yes on the report and no on those items that I listed out. Correct. Okay. All right, Ms. Wilson? Yes. Okay, and Mrs. Wren? Um, yes on the report as a whole. No on 10 10.9, 10.10, 10.11, 10.13, 10.14, 10.15, 10.16, 10.18, 10.19, 10.20, 10.21. Okay, let's see. Now I'm going to compile all your votes. <laughs> it appears that the report passes. Uh, in its entirety, but then, so that would be 8.0 on the report as a whole, and then I will have, let's see here, uh, six yes on 10.09 and two no, six yes on 10.10 .10 and two no, five yes on 10.13 and three no, Five yes on 10.14 and three no. Five yes on 10.15 and three no. Six yes on 10.16 and two no. Six yes on 10.19 and two no. Five <laughs> yes on 10.20 and three no. Um, on, guys, uh, and seven yes on 10.21 and one no, and I missed uh, 10.18 would be seven yes, one no, and 10.11, seven yes, and one no. Does that sound correct? All righty, thank you. Excuse me. Dr. Holly. 
You know, um, I've been on this board for a while and I've worked in this district. This is the first time that we've had this much dissension around the materials that we are offering to our young people. Um, uh, I have to say, and I'm not uh, trying to admonish anyone or, you know, be, um, uh, we have to do as a group, we have to do better. Um, th this, uh, there has to be a reason for board members not to approve material that's essential to, um, to our young people. Um, and uh, I'm not admonishing the board or our central administration, but we need to come together to understand how we're going to um, uh, buy our materials, how we're going to deliver um, the instruction to our students, and how we're going to make the best decisions that we possibly can make uh, for our personnel. But um, having uh, 10 items basically almost not make it um, through the uh, voting process um, by board members and not having a good understanding from central office um, exactly how these materials are going to be used uh, for the betterment of our children. We're going to need to work together more as a team to make sure that um, we're not having the zigzag effect in our voting for um, materials for our children. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Holly. We'll now move on to the human resource report item. 13.1, that includes addendum A and B submitted by Ms. Sylvia Wilson, chairperson in her committee. Are there any questions or comments on this report? Ms. Kennedy. Uh, thank you. I'd like to comment on uh, retirement. Obviously, all the retirements there are, are losses of experience and leadership and just level of knowledge, but one in particular uh, is on page 7, number 9, Minna Levinson. Longtime teacher, very well respected, very well liked, and really knows history. Even though she's she's a world language teacher, but just this year, earlier this year, she was giving uh, lectures for the Scroll Hill Historical Society on the history of Alderdice. She was, you know, came up through this area, and came back as a teacher, and um, every time I was in a meeting when I was just a parent of a child at Alderdice and she was giving a presentation, uh, the way she responded, not just to my questions, to other questions, never made you feel dumb or ignorant. Because there are things that, unless you know world languages and the study of world languages, we just don't know. Um, and so she was very good at explaining it, was very cordial to every parent. I mean, my, ch my son who was at Alderdice never had her as a teacher but she went out of her way to make sure my questions and concerns were addressed. And that tells me she probably did that with other people as well. And um, so she's a big loss and I wish her a lot, of, uh, a lot of relaxation and everything else in her retirement and hopefully I'll run into her around the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Dr. Holly. Yes. Um as I look through this, the human resources uh, notations of people who have um, resigned, I am going to say that, um, that who will be leaving us. Um, I wish Mrs. Freeze the best um, as she moves on to another um, school district and gives them her best. Um, she will surely be missed by many of the staff and um, parents, but especially the children. I am very distressed over her movement from the Pittsburgh Public Schools. I have watched her grow. I have used um, some of the ideas that um, she doesn't know this, that she did at um, Peabody 
as the principal. I actually used some of those activities that she did with my middle schoolers when I had to take them um, and start having a K to eight in two buildings. But I, I just want to say that um, her expertise will be surely missed by a lot of us in this school district. And I wish you the best um, as you move to your new adventure. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Holly. Um, I echo your sentiment, and um, my, my son just found out she was leaving, and he's 26, and he was sad to see her go, but said she was a wonderful principal and wishes her the best of luck, as, as we all do. Thank you. And Mr. Dean. Thank you. I'd like to associate myself with the comments of Dr. Holly and yourself, um, Ms. Wren. Um, but it's not just to say how much we will miss them. I'm concerned. I'm concerned about what appears to me to be a large number of significant resignations in administration. I'm concerned. I don't know what it means, but I am concerned. We are losing a lot of talent in one fell swoop. And I don't know how we're going to replace those years and years of experience and talent. But I can say that I am concerned. Um, I also want to register a negative vote on certain personnel transfers that are in this report. Um, we'll, we'll, um, when, when you go to vote, you can accept the report as a whole with exception. And I should identify those personnel by name? Um, by, um, by the section of the report. OK. I'll try to do that. The sections okay. are not numbered. Um, but I'll do the best I can. Okay, we can help you with that too. Are there any que other questions or comments? Okay. If there are no further comments, may we please have a motion and a second for roll call vote on the human resource report that includes addendum A and B. Oh, sorry, oh, Miss. Oh, I'm, I'm Ms. sorry. Falls. I'm sorry, Miss Rand. When when you said this, you said. Um, I, I wish, well, I think you said with the addendum A and B, correct? This, this human resources. Yeah, it includes addendum A and B. There is a C. Okay, okay. sorry, that no, was no, left off. That's okay, but um, when we say human resources, are we identifying the 26 page of human resources information by saying that? human resources, is that how we're identifying that mm -hmm. report? Yes. Okay, I just wanted to be sure because that's a large chunk of what, mm -hmm. where everything took place. So it, it is a denim A, B, and C. Yes, Thank you. thanks for catching that. Thank you. The report and addendums A, B, and C, my mistake, I'm sorry. Um, Okay, so did we get a motion, a second for that yet? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Falls, second. for the motion, and second by Ms. Edwards. Mrs. Kramer, may we have a roll call vote, please, on the human resource reports, including addendum A, B, and C. Mr. Carter. Yes. Ms. Edwards. Yes. Ms. Falls. Yes. Dr. Holly. Yes, on the report as a whole, I'm going to abstain on addendum B, one through seven, not because there's anything wrong with any of the personnel there, but it's because I feel that the principals in that 
uh, in the schools should have been given the opportunity to have some uh, conversation around the acceptance or non-acceptance or movement of uh, their vice principals. It would be different if it were one or two, but this is a large number of movements. And um, I'm really concerned about having this much movement at the beginning of the school year in the leader of those schools not having the opportunity to vet the people who are actually coming into the building. And not that anything is wrong with any of them. I want to be very clear about that. Um, but I just, the process of doing this, I feel that they should have had more, op the principal should have had more opportunity here. Thank you. Did you get me right? I did, I got it. All right, Mrs. Kennedy. Um, yes, on the report as a whole, I'm echoing what Dr. Holly said. She couldn't, uh, I couldn't say it any better. So I too will be abstaining on addendum B, section B, all items, which is items, are items one through seven. Um, and sadly, unfortunately, I'm also including in my yes vote the furloughs in section F in the main report. It's a sad thing to have to furlough people, but we were given explanation, <clears throat> and um, I'm just sorry that we have to do it. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Udin. On addendum B, um, the items that I want to register a no vote on mm -hmm. are related to uh, university prep at Melions. Everyone knows we are going through tremendous turmoil um, in um, first rejecting the closing of the middle school and sending it to Arsenal and then trying to organize the community and parents and the staff at the school to develop a plan to recover the school and in the midst of that turmoil and churn, uh, we are now faced with several transfers of people who have been at the school for a long time. And I understand in, in light of people, administrators at the school, complaining about not getting the kind of support that they need to make the school successful. Then we learn that certain assistant principals and people in the leadership at the school are getting poor evaluation ratings and transfers. And it's a, it's a troublesome situation. And so I want to register my opposition to those transfers. Um, and you can find them on addendum B, um, new appointments, it's letter B, item one, three, three five, and seven. Got it. Uh, vote yes on all others and no on those transfers. Got it. Thank you. Ms. Wilson. Thank you. Yes. And Mrs. Run. Okay. Keep your pen ready. Okay. okay. Yes on the HR report as a whole. Um, no on addendum B and um, no on section F. Section F of the main report. Main report, yes, thank you. Okay, we have the whole, the report as a whole passes. I have registered two abstentions on addendum B, items one through seven. So that passes um, si uh, six two or six zero two. 
And then I have um, a no vote on addendum B, items B, one, three, five, and seven. That item would pass seven, one, zero. And then um, for Mrs. Wren, I have a no vote. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> addendum B, item B, one, three, five, and seven would actually be six, two as well because Mrs. Wren voted no on the whole report. Um, so then I have um, section F of the main report, which passes eight, one. Two no's Was on. Was Ms. The Kennedy a no on that? Oh. Yes. Oh, right. Okay. Okay, we'll go, you're right, you'll go, we'll go back. Okay, so on addendum B, items B, one, three, five, and seven, those items would pass four, two, two. And then items B, two, and six would pass six, hold on. I'm going to have to compile them all. The motion passes. We're going to record. I'll go back and record all the votes. I have each of the individual abstentions and the no votes. But all of the way it's organized in the report is, is making it difficult to, for me to say on, on, my, on the fly. I Just did it the first time. Just a point of inquiry? Yes. Are five votes necessary or can four pass? Is four votes sufficient to pass, or do they require five? So on the personnel actions, we would need um, it on we would need five votes. So, so on those let's matters go back. that got four, yes. Can they you, do can not we just pass. give me a minute to go through the the items and let me add add them up? Thank you. Give me one minute, okay? Yes. I apologize. I just want to get this right. So we have the abstentions for two people on all the on B one through seven. We have the no votes for two people on items one, three, five, and seven. And then we have a no vote for one person on B two and six. So on items B, one, three, five, and seven, we do not have a, ma a majority vote for those four items. So the motion would fail as to those four items. B, addendum B, item subsection B, items one, three, five, and seven. The vote on those were four, Two, two. The remainder of the human resources report passes. 
um, including the remaining items on addendas A, B, and C. Yes, Ms. Falls. I have a question then. What happens to these people now? I mean, were they, are they established in, in the facilities or do they go back to where they, they just came from? What, what happens to them? There's, there has been no movement. Everything is pending board approval. So and they'll, just, they'll stay where they are. And just as a point, too, although the motion passed on the, um, on the other individuals, so on items two and six, those, well, uh, or at least item six, that transfer there's no vacancy for that person to transfer into if, do you know what I mean? There's that trickle down effect. Yeah, a domino effect. So practically speaking, that recommendation can't be implemented either due to the effect of the failure of the other items. Thank you, Ms. Kramer. We will now move on to items 16.01, 16.02, and 16.03, the financial and controller's report for the month of June and June 2019, and the EBE report for the month of July. Are there any questions or comments on this, these reports? Okay. Um, item 17.1 is a new business item, or should I say? 17.1 and 17.2 are new business items. Oh, well, no, I have to do them separate because there's, sorry. Item 17.1 is a new business item amending items 11.08, Pittsburgh City, Marriott City Center that was approved by the board June 19th, 2019 legislative session. Are there any questions or comments on this item? Okay, if there are no further comments or questions, may we move, may we have a motion, a second for a roll call vote on new business item 17.01. So moved. Motion by Ms. Edwards. Second. Second by Mr. Carter, thank you. Ms. Kramer, may we please have a roll call vote? Mr. Carter. Yes. Ms. Edwards. Yes. Ms. Falls. Are we just voting on 17.1? Yes. 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 Dr. Holly. Yes. Mrs. Kennedy. Yes. Mr. Udine. Yes. Ms. Wilson. I'm sorry, on the Marriott City Center, yes. Mrs. Wren. Yes. The motion passes 8-0. Thank you, Mrs. Kramer. Item 17.02 is a new business item. And do I, and I will, yeah, Ms. Kramer, you do want this is a new business item that was distributed this evening. This is not appearing in board docs at this point, but will be added. Um, just to read into the record, the, what was handed to us is resolved that the board of directors of the school district of Pittsburgh it's authorize its- Correction, it, it, it is in board docs. Oh, just, oh it's in Just there. for the record. It's been, yeah. Refresh but, your board docs, and the motion <laughs> is available for your review. Thank you. Yeah. Can I request that it be ready for those? Sure. Yes, sure. Mr. Dean. Are you ready? Um, authorize its proper officers to approve payment to Shamika Crenshaw, Principal, Pittsburgh Online Academy, for continuing to assume temporary school leadership responsibilities at University Prep at Maline 6 to 12. This action was previously approved from May 6, 2019 through July 31, 2019, and board authorization is requested to extend this temporary assignment with a revised anticipated end date of August 
31, 2019, Dr. Crenshaw will receive additional payment in the amount of $428 per week worked in this capacity. Total costs shall not exceed $2,140, payable from account line 4300-010-2380-114. Thank you, Ms. Mrs. Kramer. Are there any questions or comments? Okay. Ms. Wilson? I'm part of the personnel committee for the board, and I must say I object to something being placed in front of me right now at this time with no opportunity to have had this discussed with us at all, either with the personnel committee or in executive session. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Mr. Dean, and then Mrs. Kennedy. I want to take a moment to thank Dr. Crenshaw for stepping in when uh, Dr. Hill was out on medical leave and the school was in a very precarious condition and she has stepped in and provided some very important leadership and I just want to take a moment to thank her for interrupting her vacation this hot summer in order to help you prep. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dean. I, I concur. Ms. Mrs. Kennedy. Uh, thank you. Um, while I'm not on the personnel committee, so I can't agree with everything uh, from a personal point of view with, with Ms. Wilson, but I do agree the personnel committee should have heard about this when they met before the whole uh, board met in executive session. To be thrown this right now is unbelievable. No time to discuss it. We don't discuss these types of things publicly. We get to discuss them behind closed doors. With, and and um, so people can't even express their opinions on this, whether they're for it, against it, wh whatever reasons. And that, to me, is a large concern. We were warned at the beginning of executive session about 17.01. There is no reason that we could not have been warned about this one during executive session. So I have a real problem with process tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mrs. Kennedy. Dr. Holly. I'd like to ask the administration. We, we were in executive session from 5 o'clock until 7.10. I'd like to know why no one brought this to our attention, not once, um, during executive session. Who? Who are you pointing to? Doc, hmm? You want, oh, Dr. Hamlet. So, so, I, so I would say I thought this was on, it wasn't, and I prompted them to make sure it was on because we need Dr. Um, Crenshaw to continue the great work she's doing to make sure UPREP is ready to open. And we're talking about, uh, and I do understand the board, and we'll fix that process, but right now we're talking about getting this school ready, UPREP ready to open for the school year. You know what, I can understand that, and yep. I certainly want uh, you prep to uh, get off to a good start. But procedurally, this was, this is a, a, a this is, this is a major error on the part of the administration to do this to not only um, the board, but also to do this to Ms. Dr. Crenshaw. I mean, this should have been discussed um, as a personnel issue. And Mrs. Um, Wilson, who was the chair, was here early enough for somebody to at least call her in and have a conversation. We, we cannot continue to do that. Um, you know, we can't continue to do that to the board. And now it's like we're, if we don't vote for this, we're like against Dr. Crenshaw. And that's not the issue. The issue is the process. And we've got to learn to follow this process. This is terribly unfair to the board to bring this to actually, it wasn't even at our table when we sat down. This was actually brought to us be right before we got to vote. This is, this is unconscionable. Any other questions or comments? Um, I echo Dr. Holly's um, concerns and others' concerns. Um, 
you know, I, I'm tempted not to vote for it, but I, I don't want to hurt Dr. Crenshaw. I know she's been working hard to get you prep ready. So um, I think we are at the point we need a motion and a second for this, for 17.02. Second. Motion by Ms. Dean, second by Ms. Edwards. Thank you. Mr. Carter? Um, yes. Ms. Edwards? Yes. Ms. Falls? No. Um, understanding that we have voted on Dr. Crenshaw to, um, to be a U prep from May to July. And once again, um, I've also experienced what Ms. Wilson has. And when you're chair and work hard on a committee, you should not have to sit and have something put in front of you without you know, knowing about it. So um, I am voting no on the process, not about Dr. Crenshaw. Dr. Hawley? I am really terribly upset over this. Um, but I know the school needs to have somebody there. And the fact that there's nobody in central office that can go over there and help the school is really troubling to me as well. Um, I'm going to vote for this, but I am not happy. I am just telling you up front, I am not happy about this. Yes. Mrs. Kennedy. A yes, because the school needs her, but I am still registering my complaint on process. Thank you. Mr. Udine. Yes. Ms. Wilson. No. Mrs. Wren. No. Okay, the motion passes 5-3. Thank you, Mrs. Kramer. Are there any announcements to be brought before us this evening that do not require a legislative vote? Everybody's hands went up at once. Um, let's start with Ms. Wilson. I just wanted to um, just do a shout out to former board member Mrs. Sherry Azuda. Um, this past spring, she became an ordained Lutheran minister. I just wanted to congratulate her. That's great news. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Uh, Mr. Dean. Thank you, Ms. Wren. Um, I have a couple things. One, I want to uh, thank everyone who responded to the conference um, on the school to prison pipeline uh, that was conducted by the University of Pittsburgh School of Education. There were several board members who were present um, for the plenary, Michelle Alexander uh, was the keynote speaker, and all those who attended really did thoroughly enjoy um, the uh, presentation. But many people asked during the course of the three-day conference, so what's happening with the school district and the University of Pittsburgh? And I have to say that I couldn't give them a clear answer on what the collaborative relationship is between the school district and the university. Um, they're right across the street. And they have considerable resources um, that would benefit our students. And I would urge the administration to pursue collaborative relationships and partnerships with the University School of Education um, for the upcoming school year, um, and especially the UPREP was a school that was born out of a promise to collaborate between the school district and the School of Education, and I urge us to honor that promise uh, and keep that promise. Um, secondly, I just want to 
send my heartfelt condolences out to the family of one of our students, a 10-year-old fifth grader uh, at Weill, um, who we buried today in a very, very sad uh, funeral. Uh, 10-year-olds are not supposed to be buried by their parents. They're supposed to grow old and bury their parents. Um, and I just want to thank all of those who contributed to the GoFundMe uh, account, uh, which did meet its goal, um, and keep the family in our prayers. Thank you. I want to also thank Ms. Henderson, the principal at Weill. She organized a lot of support um, for that family, and that family is in tremendous pain right now, um, and so they're going to need all the support that we can get to them. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Dean. Ms. Falls and then Dr. Holly. Mrs. Wren, um, I'm doing this not in the fashion that I thought I would. I'm so disappointed at what just happened here, that it just, um, I'm gonna read what I worked on all day and it's not gonna be presented in the fashion that it was meant to. I would like to remind the administration of my request to the agenda review that any board tabs addressing matters of health and physical education pass through Mr. Ryan Eldridge, the health and physical education <coughs> coordinator. This will assure the board, the staff, and the public that Mr. Eldridge is aware of the programs, supplies, and direction of the department at all times. Um, I would like to thank Ms. Jenkins for all her assistance and support and some future good things that will be happening, and also Ms. Wilson for chairing the Education Committee. I thank you. Um, the first month of, uh, first Monday of every month is Cary Crime Watch. We get about 100 people or more who come to this meeting. The partnership is between the community and the Pittsburgh police, especially Officer Laffey. This is an important meeting that the crime statistics are shared with the community and if any of our PPS students are involved. Also, positive interactions between the school and the police and the community are shared. In light of the tragedy of the death of Officer Calvin Hall, I know we all extend our sincere sympathies to his family, fellow police officers, friends, and the community he worked so hard in. He was the very core of the saying, one person can make a difference. He truly did. We thank you. Also, I would like to give a huge shout out to my colleague, Mr. Udin. He has worked tirelessly to be a liaison between the community and the district regarding the status of Pittsburgh Malayans 6 to 12 University Preparatory School. By the way, that name was for Mr. Sumter, who always corrected if it wasn't said like that. He is in the process of establishing various committees and working with administration to ultimately do what is found best for the students, for the community, and for the district. Thank you, Mr. Udeen. I am sure there are other board members that are also involved um, because have, you have students who are also attending that school. I'd like to also thank you. I attended the Summer Dreamers end of school activity yesterday at Arlington. It was a very uplifting activity. Um, great attendance, the parking was just all over the place down there and the parents were really involved and the people who um, worked at Arlington did a really great job with the summer activities. And I watched the little, um, the little dreamers get promoted to become summer dreamers. 
And I thought that was very neat. They, those little children were so excited about that activity. Um, Carrick Community Council was sponsoring a back to school community dinner for students and their families who attend Pittsburgh Carrick, Concord, Roosevelt, and Southbrook on August 8th, 6 to 8, at Carrick Dairy Pavilion. They will be providing backpacks and supplies to students. I'd like to thank Ms. Pugh for all of your assistance in this project. Thank you. A salute to our military. Past, present, and future has never been so relevant to me than tonight. Sergeant Ryan Lane was killed in action in Afghanistan on July 23rd, 2009. He was a Pittsburgh Public School graduate from Carrick High School, the class of 2002. He was married to one of my health technology students, Valerie Lane. My heart will always hurt for her as she describes that day the two Marines and Sergeant Lane's father walked up her mother's sidewalk. The experience of viewing, his viewing, the funeral and being laid to rest was heart-wrenching. But Miss, Miss Lane, you were so strong and so welcoming to all of his family, the, the many fellow Marines, your family, his relatives, friends, and all that loved him. The memorial service that we had with the Alumni Association at Pittsburgh Carrick High School was amazing. I had the honor of presenting his mother and his father with an enlarged picture of Sergeant Lane. Each of their pictures, I knew and that it was their favorite one of him. I promise I will keep his honorable legacy alive at every opportunity I have. Thank you, Sergeant Ryan Lane, for making the ultimate sacrifice for our country and all of the people that will never forget you. Thank you, Ms. Friend. Thank you, Ms. Falls. Dr. Holly. Yes, I too want to echo um, Mr. Udine's uh, comments. Uh, first, uh, for the School to Prison Pipeline uh, conference that was held by the Urban Education Department uh, from the University of Pittsburgh. It was outstanding. Lots of good information that was given out that talked about how, to, how resilient our children are in this um, state of uh, moving from school to school, maybe to prison, maybe somewhere else. But one of the, um, I, I just want to say thank you to our board members that actually attended as well, Mrs. Edwards, Mrs. Wilson, Mr. Dean, and myself. Um, I was uh, a bit perturbed, though, at the fact that I did not see a lot of school-based people um, from central office or um, schools that actually attended, and it was noticed. Um, people were coming up and asking where were our um, administrators and where were our, some of our uh, central staff, um, why aren't they there? This was very good information. Um, I saw Dr. Lamar there each day uh, participating, um, but we really needed to see more of our um, central office people there. This was uh, to have people from around the country here and not have our own there. Um, uh, we need to do better as Mr. Udin is always saying, we need to do better. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put that out there. Um, we need to make sure that we are participating in those major events that um, affect our children that are very challenging. I'd like to say thank you to Mrs. Pugh, Ebony Pugh, for her work in um, the homegoing celebration of Jonathan Cooper Jr. 
from Aaliyah Wow. As a former principal who has lost small children um, in a fire or what have you, this was, um, it was ex important for me to be there to support not only the family, but to support the principal as well, because I knew exactly what she was going through. But I want to thank Mrs. Pugh for her work in organizing um, some of the work that needed to be done at Costin's Funeral Home. They are always giving back um, to the community in support of children and family members that have this um, tragic events in their lives. Um, I also want to say thank you to Reverend Dr. John Robinson III, who officiated and who is a, he were, actually works for the school district. He, did, he took on a lot um, uh, around this uh, homegoing celebration. I also want to thank Mrs. Freeze's staff for coming out. Um, you People really don't understand how important it is to have people come out to the school to support the children that, are, that knew the child and were very upset um, over his death. It was a tragic death um, and they came out to support those students and they're gonna to need to do more supporting of those students as the year goes, uh, goes on. Uh, because it's not just a one-shot deal, but they were there. And I want to say thank you to that, um, to your social workers and all of the, pe the people who gathered around and sent people out, not just for the children, but they're also going to need it for the staff because they were at that funeral today. And I can tell you it is not over in terms of getting support for them. So... Um, Again, and um, Mrs. Henderson, of course, I expected nothing, more, ne nothing less than her um, way of supporting um, her families um, in that school. So uh, I just want to thank the school district again as a whole for what you've done to help with the family, um, board members that came out in support of the family, <clears throat> in hopes that we will now look at making sure that um, our students get the mental health that they need, not only while there we have school time from August to June, but beyond in the summertime. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to work on that and bring it to the board for support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Holly. Um, Ms. Edwards? I also would like to offer condolences to the family of Officer Calvin Hill, a black male, 30 years of age, gone too soon. Jonathan Cooper, our wild student, age 10, another black male, gone too soon. So I am also agreeing that the mental health issues are growing and that as a school district, we need to take a second look of how our services are ran and how they're accessed so that we can do more fully support the families and staff. It was traumatic. I went to the vigil and you could cut the pain with a knife. So we feel it when we go there. We feel for the families, but we also need to do the best we can to help them. I also went to the school to prison pipeline with QCEF and the takeaway there was the Just Discipline Project, which complements restorative justice and practices. And Dr. Hamlet, I would love for us to take a look at that program because it mirrors what we have with a, with a little level, high, level up it's a level up from where we are, but they both can work together. So I would like us to look at that and to say congratulations and thank you to Melanie Claxton, Kashif Henderson, 
the staff and students and parents of the day, lear day of learning I went to with Summer Dreamers, Little Dreamers. They had a lot of fun. They learned, but they had fun while they were learning, and I had fun watching them. So I give hats off and kudos to them for their outstanding work just teaching kids while they have fun this summer. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Edwards. Mr. Udine. Thank you. Um, I'll be brief. Um, a name came up earlier this evening uh, within the personnel discussion, um, but it got lost uh, in all the other conversation about personnel. And I want to take a moment to acknowledge the years of service that we will be losing from the Pittsburgh public schools with Melissa Fries going on uh, to bigger and better things. Uh, I want to thank you for your work, for your generosity, for your talent, um, and it's going to take several people to fill your shoes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wren. Thank you, Mr. D. Ms. Mrs. Kennedy. Uh, thank you. So much to say, but a lot of it has been said. Um, I think everybody has been touched by the two deaths that we've been talking about, and there are no words because neither should have happened. Just on Twitter earlier today, when I was seeing some recommended things, I saw a photo of Officer Hall this spring helping to plant trees in Northview Heights. He was doing that because he's invested in the community. Right, and that's just an example of his character. And I'm sure there's a lot of examples, but that one caught my attention because like most people here, maybe everyone here, I did not know the man. I had never heard of him. But this is not how we should hear of people. Same with the young man that we just buried. And it's hard. It is hard as an adult to understand why these happen. I can't imagine for our students, if we can't explain it to ourselves, there's no way we can explain it to our students. And there are no words. None of this should have happened. So um, my heart goes out to all the families, friends, community, of every, uh, it's just heartbreaking. On a different note, Mr. Udine was stealing some of my thunder because I purposely was leaving it for now as opposed to personnel. I've known Mrs. Freeze since the day she was introduced as the principal at Alderdice. Mr. Sh uh, Mr. Shear had, been tr had accepted a transfer to SciTech, and as parents, we were all worried. Who's coming in? What are we, oh my God. Well, in a very hot summer day in an unair conditioned Alderdice library, I remember a crowd, because we were all curious. You know, we all wanted to know. Now, some of the people in that room had previously met Mrs. Freeze and had known her from other ways. She did grow up in this community. So it's not, that wasn't surprising. Then there were people like me. I had had no previous experience. There had been turmoil in the school the spring before she arrived. Let me tell you, she came in and changed the tone. There was a lot of, a lot of people calmed down. Now I don't blame Mr. Shearer for the turmoil. There was a huge fight and it, spilled, it, was, it was something from the neighborhood that happened at the school and there were things he had to put in place but it didn't go over well with the parents. And Mrs. Freeze came in, very calm, cool, and collected. In fact, I remember in that hot, sweltering library that evening, Roseanne Levine, who was the PTO president at the time, handing out pieces of, of, um, of cake. It wasn't a Rocky Road cake or something like that. 
It was, I think if I, I forget, it was a red velvet or chocolate silk, something basically saying this was going to be a smooth transition. And she was accurate in her prediction. Now, my son was entering 10th grade. There were problems in 10th grade with teachers not following his IEP. Mrs. Freeze was right on top of it. And, you know, that told me a lot. Because as a parent, you want, your, you want everything to go right for your children. I did not have to go to her office. I had the PSE ITL in the building telling me, this is what's been happening. I've already escalated it to Mrs. Freeze. And it was taken care of. That was amazing to me. Because a lot of times, as a parent, you have to go and keep asking, can this happen? Will this happen? Why isn't this happening? She took care of it. It was smooth. That's one of her traits. She makes everything look easy. She does a lot of work in the background, but she presents this calm self and makes everything, oh, that's not a problem. It can happen. And that alone, I think, helps everybody who deals with her, be it staff, parents, or students. Because if you're a calm person, you help make other people calm. If you're an uptight person, they're going to respond likewise. So I personally will miss Mrs. Freeze. I will miss your wisdom, your guidance, your answering of questions, even questions on the QT. Like I, one, one, there was one board meeting, and oh, I don't remember how many months over a year ago, where we had to accept a donation to Alderdice. I had questions because of the teacher. It was one of the teachers that didn't follow my son's IEP. She set me straight on how that teacher had changed since that time. So I was able to comfortably vote in favor of accepting that donation for that specific classroom. That's just one of the small things that she does along the way of doing the big things. And I'm glad you're still in the neighborhood, so to speak, although I'm not in the immediate neighborhood. You're next one of the neighbor, two neighborhoods over. And I hope to run into you on a regular basis. And I wish you all the luck. And I just wish you were continuing your career here at Pittsburgh Public. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Wren. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. While there's not a lot that is left to be said tonight, um, I did want to say that we sincere, you know, sincerely offer our thoughts and that they are with the families um, who have endured the terrible losses mentioned here this evening. Um, if um, there are no further announcements, may I have a motion, a second to adjourn? Oh. Okay. Second. Mo motion by Ms. Kennedy, second by Ms. Falls, and third by Ms. Edwards. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.